Hello and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. Today's episode is going to teach you about Boeing 737 hydraulics on the level of somebody who is doing an oral and practical dispatch exam. Not on the level of a mechanic or pilot type of knowledge, but on the really basic type of level of understanding for aircraft dispatch. And this episode, I'm excited to say, is sponsored by my friends at 08 Left which is a website that I love to shop at because of the customization that I can do with their products. Now, if you look behind me, I've got a free airport metal print that they customized with the color I wanted, with the airports I wanted, and then made it on metal. It looks amazing. It looks like it's floating off of my wall. And so that is a product that 08 Left produced. If you want to go shopping over there, check it out because you can use code 08LAURA for 20% off. And I'll have more about them and another of my customs to show you in a few minutes. So here are some key points that you would want to know as an aircraft dispatcher if you're using the 737-300 for your practical test. What we would like to tell that examiner is some highlights of the 737's hydraulic system. We've got three separate and independent hydraulic systems. The reason is for redundancy. We want to enhance safety. These systems are called system A, system B, and the standby system. My A system, system A, uses two pumps. One is engine driven, comes from engine one. One is electrically driven, comes from engine number two. And then system B, we've got again, an engine driven pump, but it comes from engine two, and its electric pump comes from engine number one. So you can see they've got some redundancy that is built in the system. We also have a standby system for added redundancy, which is powered by an electric driven motor pump. The standby system comes into use if we lose system A pressure or system B pressure or both. That would be more catastrophic, of course, but the standby system should still be available. Now, each of these three hydraulic systems has got a fluid reservoir that is found in the main wheel well area, and it has the ability to have like this reservoir. So if we have some fluid loss, there still should be some available in that reservoir. And the system has to be pressurized. We pressurize that system using pneumatic bleed air. And so that hydraulic fluid is what allows us to move the flight controls a lot easier than if the pilots were just fighting against the aerodynamic forces. The airplane's moving through the air very quickly. The controls are very large. That means it would be a lot of strength if the person had to constantly maneuver those controls against the wind. So we boost them basically with hydraulics. You can kind of describe it like a power steering type of system. But that means that the system has to be pressurized. We're using that hydraulic fluid to do work. That pressure is typically the normal operating pressure, 3000 PSI. So we're having a lot of high pressure fuel here, or high pressure fluid rather. Here we have an overview of the system. Now, do not read this in panic and be like, oh, I can't memorize this for my dispatch, my dispatch oral and practical test. Not to worry, we're gonna be back to it in a second. But first, another quick word about 08 left. I wanna show you another of my customs here. This is made of metal, it's very large. And I had them customize an artwork that I really like from their website, but they've added to it my personal vision statement and my personal mission statement. And I love this because I've keep this on my wall where I can see it when I'm working and I can look up at that and read my personal vision and my personal mission statement, but it's really cool how it's integrated with an approach light system, which is another topic. If you're a regular viewer, you'll know that I am rather passionate about instrument flying. So basically they'll customize anything you love on their website for you. They are a small business. They have amazing, passion for anything aviation geek-ish. They've been around almost 10 years and I would check it out. Use my promo code 08LAURA 
for 20% off. All right, so let's take a look quick at this diagram, which does seem to be rather complicated when we first look at it, but that means I just pull out my pen and draw on it. So we've got system A over here. We have got a pump that's attached to the engine and then M for a motor. So we have a mechanical pump and then a motor driven pump. And then on system B, we also have that motor driven pump and the uh, actual mechanically driven pump. You notice each has air pressure coming in, so that pressurizes our system. And then we've got our standby pressure and standby system here with the electric motor driven pump. Now, the other thing, the reason I'm pulling all this up is you can see that these systems are interactive with each other. But right in the middle is my flight control. So remember I was saying we need hydraulics, especially in large airplanes, to make it easier for the crew to operate the airplane. Kind of like power steering. So we've got my rudder, my ailerons, and then my elevator and elevator feel system. Notice when we look at this that in both of my ailerons right here and my elevator and elevator fuel system I have pressure coming in from system A and pressure from system B. The rudder is the only part of the hydraulics that has also standby system as well as A and B available for it. The reason for this is because our ailerons and our elevator on the 737 have mechanical backups, meaning we actually have cables, control cables running out to those controls that the crew could use if we had a loss of system A and system B. But if we had a loss of system A and system B, we would still want some control of our rudder and we would get that through that standby system. You see a lot of other components on here, such as the landing gear, the steering systems, we have spoilers, we have something called yaw damper, we have the brakes, we have thrust reversers, we have um, flaps, leading edge flaps and slats. We have a whole lot of different things that are run by hydraulics. And honestly, I show you this not to confuse you and not to say you need to draw this for your dispatch practical test. I mean, I hope you don't have to draw this, but just to show you many things are operated by hydraulics. So here's a list of all the different components for the 737 that are on system A and that are on system B. Again, I wouldn't expect somebody to have to illustrate all this for a oral and practical test, but it is good to be aware so that when the examiner asks you about the hydraulic system, you can say that there's system A, there's system B, there's the standby system and that they operate the flight controls, they operate the flaps, the slats, the brakes, the landing gear system, and steering of the aircraft on the ground, and a variety of other components. So here we have the standby hydraulic system components, which you can see there's not really much on the standby system alone. We have our thrust reversers. We would want those available to stop the airplane if we were to lose both system A and B. We want our leading edge devices so we can extend those slats, slow the airplane down for a landing as normal as possible. And then we also really need that rudder. Notice we don't have the elevator or the ailerons on here because they are on both A and B, and plus I mentioned they have cable backups, so there's actually already a backup system for those systems. But for the rudder, we have A, B, and then standby hydraulic system as the other backup. Finally, as just some more points to summarize this, we have hydraulic power that goes to all of our primary controls, like I just mentioned. But then ailerons and elevator can be operated manually. The standby hydraulic pressure does go to that rudder in case A or B or both are not available. Our slats and our flaps, they can be extended and retracted both hydraulically and electrically. But that standby hydraulic can extend our leading edge slats, but not retract them. So these are good points. I would just make yourself some points about this 
explain it to your dispatch examiner, include helpful hints like that the system pressure is normally 3000 PSI. It is pressurized with the pneumatic system. We use hydraulics to assist the crew in flying the airplane. And then kind of go through a little bit of what is on system A, what is on system B, and the standby system and how those different systems are powered. So final thanks shout out to 08 Left who sponsored this video. If you're a true av geek like me and you want to check out their stuff, definitely do it. You will not be disappointed. I absolutely love the art products I've got from them and the service that I've gotten as well. They always send me a proof before I order anything so I can make sure it's exactly what I want. Don't forget, use code 08LAURA and get yourself 20% off. And like, subscribe, and share this video. Watch for more in the days to come. Have an awesome day.